What's up guys, Evil Deer here. So today I want to speak to you about how I learned Esperanto using programming. Now obviously if you're not a programmer then this here will not interest you at all and I suggest you just click away from the video unless you're interested in maybe becoming a programmer. Now I'm not a programmer, I do not claim to be a programmer in any shape or form. I know a few languages but that doesn't make me a programmer. So what I noticed when I first started to learn Esperanto is that I had a lot of problems with flashcards and grammar guides and all that type of stuff because that's, those things didn't work for me. Like, I could learn a word in a flashcard program, yeah, sure, no problem, but associating that with a concept, that became hard. Like, for instance, I knew the word for car was alto, but if you suddenly came up to me and you went, okay, what's the word for automobile? I'd go, well, an automobile is a car and a car is alto, ah! Like, I would associate the word with its direct English equivalent, not the concept. Now, I think this is probably because I'm like a kinetic learner, I think that's the word for it. Someone who physically needs to interact with something in order to associate the word or the concept with the actual sound that I'm hearing. Like, for instance, I knew thousands, well not thousands, it's probably going overboard, and I knew hundreds of words in Esperanto from the direct English equivalent, but if you swapped it around and you told me the Esperanto word, I was like, oh, oh, because I didn't practice that in my flashcard games at first. So the way to overcome this, I found, was through programming. Now, as you can see right now on the screen, I've got this program called Game Maker 7 Lite open. It's a free trial version. You can um, they don't actually make this version anymore, but you can go download it from, you know, dodgy websites. I'm not, I'm not promoting dodginess or anything. Yeah, yeah, bad evil deer. Um, but you can get it from other websites apart from the official Yo-Yo Games website, which is now the owner of it. Now, Game Maker has this language called GML. Probably most of you programmers have never heard of it because it's not a big language. So the good thing about this is it doesn't matter what language you know, you can probably pull these exact same concepts in any program. So what I've done here is I've just created this basic object um, and this here is the most basic that I can get. Now, you'll notice here that I'm not, this isn't actually Esperanto, this is Toki Pono because I've just started learning the language and I've got an interest in it because of its minimalistic um, way of working. Um, whoa, what was that? Okay, back right now. I thought I heard a rat running around, but that was just me going insane. So yeah, I've started learning Tokipona. Um, I like the minimalistic style of the language, and I thought, you know, I'll use the same techniques I've done in the past for this language, and it'll probably work better for this one in particular. So now, we'll look over at the screen. You see here how I've got this adjective, um, E just represents Esperanto, and then I've got an adjective T represents Tokipona, so or English, sorry, not Esperanto. Um, so, good is equal to Pono, and as you can see, simple is equal to Pono because Toki Pono is like that, it minimalizes things. So then it's just randomly picking one of these out of the six that I've got here, and then we go down here, and it's doing the same thing, but it's doing that to form a sentence. So it's going, I'm, your, she's, he, and then it's doing the Toki Pono equivalent, which is me, Sina, Ona, Li, um, on the Lee and you see how I'm already putting these into sentence constructions rather than just individual words because I need to learn things in context and this whole thing is just wrapped in basically a repeat statement that's what the step is it's just repeating it non-stop until I type end or it just continues on because it goes how do you say blah it randomly picks one of these strings in here and then it um, basically goes and checks to see if it's equal to one of these strings up here I'll sorry, to one of these strings just here, and then if you get it right, you go success, otherwise you get a fail. Now to see this in action, I'll just quickly run it. Okay, so it's running now, it's saying she's liquid. Now obviously that makes no real sense, but actually, you know, you can say someone's liquid, that's um, talking about gender and stuff. So for instance, I just go honor, um, the tello, I think that's what it was because I've only just started studying, and success. So basically all it's doing is forming sentences by pulling in random nouns and adjectives and you can do that with adverbs, you can do that with entire sentence parts, but that's how I've found learning a language to be quite easy and effective because in this way you don't just learn a couple of sentence constructions, you learn the actual sentence construction itself because you're swapping in and out adjectives, nouns, adverbs, everything, and then you're forced to start thinking in the language. So if I just give it one more, you're tall, so that's a sinner, um, suli, 
from memory. Yep, there you go, bingo. And I just keep doing this. Now, you saw this was the most basic form sentence. There wasn't much to it. But with Esperanto, when I started doing this, I had hundreds of different sentence constructions that I wanted to learn, um, different styles and all sorts of stuff. And that's how it got to the point where I can speak the language fluently because I forced myself to start thinking in the language by programming a basic program to just randomly spit out sentences and go, translate this, see if you can do it. And I also, like here it says, um, you know, fail, but for my Esperanto one, it goes, you're an you're a tool and stuff like that. Like, actually, I had random insults in there, so I'd get a little bit peed off at my own program. Almost resulted in a couple of keyboard throws, but it was all good in the end. Anyway, so that's it. I just wanted to show you how I do this with programming. Obviously, if you're not a programmer, this ain't gonna work for you. Um, but I know a lot of Esperantists are into learning programming languages because if you're an Esperantist, you generally got an interest in languages, which also goes over to programming languages. So yeah, if you've liked this video, give it a like, um, share it with your friends, and if you haven't already, subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you in the next video. And if not, well, I may program something to find you and hurt you. <laughs>